Hey friends, it's Angela with Wild Violets Art. Thank you so much for joining me tonight and my marvelous Monday. <clears throat> tonight I'm going to be working with Encircled in Nature bundle. It is one of the new online exclusive bundles that is available online only. There's no catalogs that show this. Um, I will provide a link to my Facebook page that will give you access to the photos again and so that you have lots of choices um, and you can take a look at all that's being um, provided currently. So um, this one is going to be peekaboo cards. So I haven't done that before on my page and it'll be two different kinds of peekaboo cards. So one with like a secret place. So we'll, we'll check it out here in a second. But also, I think I mentioned that I was part of the Stamp and Share for Leaders um, swap, and it was a new swap that was only 21 cards. And I got lots of online exclusives because it was primarily just that. And so some of them were for this Encircled in Nature. So I wanted to show you those as well. So let me just change this out real quick so you can see the my screen a little bit better on where I put my hands. Okay, so these are the two cards that we're going to be working on today. And um, this is just a regular peekaboo card. But this one is really fun. And it has a little extra for a message, sentiments. And then, of course, this is the envelope that it goes with. So you can see that the Encircled in Nature has 11 great stamp sets. Um, there's trees, flowers, vines, little moon with stars, and then these beautiful sentiments here for you. May this year be incredible and filled with possibilities. A huge thank you. And you mean so much to me. So partly why I purchased this is it's a great neutral um, stamp set, but it's also, I love that it's got the um, dies that allow for a peekaboo, or you can make wreaths. So you can see the wreath that I made in this card is more of a spring wreath. But, um, and then here's another card that can be considered summer. So we've got spring, summer, and then it's got these great leaves. So if you take a look at some of the dies, let me pull this out so you can see them all. They've got these great leaves, got these little um, sprigs, which could be done for spring. And they've got um, a great wreath of berries, or it could be considered um, like rose hips or something. And then it's got spruce or some sort of a pine sprig and then it's got these little trees and then a cutout for the tree here and then of course this makes actually a um a wreath a twig wreath and then of course this right here stamps up this right here okay and then the last one we have spring summer fall is winter so this one, I used lots of um, the sprigs. So I used the little berries. I used the evergreen boughs. And I also used some of that specialty paper that was available, the Berry Burst Old Olive and White Glimmer paper. So I used that for some of my evergreen sprigs and what I would consider like a berry or a little um, spring sprig. I made it into like a winter sprig. So you can see it's just lovely. It's got all that little, um, that beautiful sparkly element to it. And then I added a little bow that, and this is more like a Christmas rose. So you can contrast these two. So both of them you can see are great examples of how you can switch it up for whatever season that you're doing. So spring, summer, fall, and winter. So a great combination of cards that you could make from this. Okay, so here's some more examples. 
and then we just pull these out. This was done by Kristen Bryant. So it's a great example. And then this one, I really not want to know where they got the Minnesota stamp. <laughs> it's great. So really beautiful. This one was done by Mary Alice Bellis. And then here for you, and this was done by Denise Kessler. So a little wink of Stella in the sky, really beautiful. So I should color it with the blending brush. And then this one was done by Amy Rich. And I love how she did the coloring on the back. It looks like it was done with watercolor paper. So it's really beautiful. So lots of samples. And I'll um, post these samples to my blog. And I'll give you the recipe, of course, for what we're doing today. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to work on the spring card first. And um, we're going to be using Lost Lagoon ink pad. Now, there really isn't much stamping on this card. It's primarily the die cutting and then um, the stamping just for the, the flower. Let me grab my, my memento. We're going to be using blends. And so we're going to be using the three gems, three or the tinsel gems three pack. And it has the Lost Lagoon, Fresh Freesia, and I believe this is um, Moon, Misty Moonlight. So those are the colors in this. And we're going to be using these two right here. Okay, so this paper here is from the bright and beautiful um, pack that had the beautiful balloons bundle. So this was part of a suite and I just love the ombre effect. And this is a really beautiful way to get multiple colors without having to do inks or blender brushes or whatever. So it's just got a really beautiful design to it. So one of the features of this um, set of dies that I just wanted to point out to you that I think is really awesome. If you're making one of these twig wreaths, and let me just show you, um, it's hidden, so I guess you can't really see, but I did a twig as a base for this wreath. So if you're doing the twig and you want to get that effect, I love it that Stampin' Up! added these two little tabs so that you know how to line it up. And then, of course, you just lay it flat down and then you use whatever tape that you're going to be using um, to hold it in place. We're only going to need one of them. I'm going to use the smallest one for this one. And we wanted about... I'm going to move it up a little bit further than I had it here. And then let me just double check and make sure I have the height right. Yes, I do. Okay, so I don't need this. You could use it for whatever. But what I did is I die cut an extra one of these from white from one of my other projects. And then I used this stamp right here and I used the markers to color it. So I used both the Fresh Freesia and I use, these are the Stampin' Right markers, and I use the, um, the Lost Lagoon to color this little sprig. So it almost looks like it could be hyacinth. So it gave it kind of a real pretty spring look. And then I stamped it 
here on the corner. So you can see that it has the green for the stems and then the fresh freesia for the florals. And that'll sit just behind on my card. Okay, so start with an A2 card base. And before I get too carried away, I should have glued this on. It helps if I do it all at the same time. And I forgot about that. So again, we're using the smaller of the two. All right, so actually I'm going to glue this on. And I'm just going to fit it in the hole. And hopefully that holds it in place while I run it through the die machine. Okay. So I want my hole right here. And I'm just going to die cut that out real quick. Okay, almost perfect. Not quite, but really close. So I think that this little bit of offset should be able to uh, be fine. Okay, so I'm going to stamp the pretty floral. And I'm doing this in memento ink because I want to be able to use my blends. sure it's inked up really well. And then I'm going to just set it aside and let it dry. Okay. So one of the things that goes on my card front is this really pretty scallop. So I'm using the um, scalloped contours and I'm using the scallop die that makes this really pretty scallop. So I'm going to actually make that 3D, but first thing I need to do is I need to just trim it to size and then I'm going to wrap the ribbon around it and then we'll pop it up. I'm going to use the edge of my card to make sure I have this straight. Okay, so I'm going to use a little bit of this linen ribbon. And um, this is in also the Lost Lagoon. And I'm going to use my tear and tape to hold it in place. So I want my tear and tape to be a little bit longer than my ribbon. And I'm lining it up with the top. That way, when I pull this up, there'll be a, something that will wrap around both ends. The nice thing about this glass mat is this tear and tape doesn't stick to it. I want my ribbon to be able to wrap all the way around. So again, I'm lining it up with my cardstock. You 
and then we'll pop it up using dimensionals. I do not know how it is that my cats get their hair on absolutely everything, but they do. And I find them on everything I have here. All my adhesives, all my surfaces. It's too fun. Okay. All right. And, and then we have this really beautiful wreath. So I do want this to pop up. So, um, but you can do it with glue dots or you can do it with these dimensionals. And what I do is I just cut the dimensionals in half. So I don't know if you can see this, but they're cut in half and it makes it really easy to pop up something like this. So I'm just gonna use a little pair of tweezers to help me place these. And I think it works the best at the berries. Looks like I have an area that didn't get, that didn't come out. I'm trying to find places that are wide enough. Hey, Denise, thanks for joining me. I'm glad you like it. I figured if I showed you all four seasons, you could pick the one you wanted to make right now. I did see another demonstrator make it a, a spring card. Okay, so I'm going to add, so if you'll notice this kind of starts going up around in two places. So I'm just going to place this down here so that it starts from this area. Okay. And just it looks like one glue dot was sticking up. So looks like we've managed to get all of them tucked onto card front. All right. And now I'm going to glue this in place. And remember, I used my Stampin' Write markers. So let's just make sure this is in the right location. that this really pretty stamp shows up. Okay. And then I'm just going to trim this ribbon a little bit. I tied the bow already. So you don't have to watch me tie a bow. In case you're needing bow help, I have a YouTube video that's all about bows, and that's what it's called is Bows, Bows, Bows. And it's just a great way to, to learn how to do a bunch of different bows. I do the basic one and then I do fancy ones. So, hey Penny, thanks for joining me. Okay, so we're gonna be using the, the bubble bath pink for this flower and the fresh freesia light. And then we're also going to be using both of the Lost Lagoon as well. So because I'm using this Fresh Freesia, I'm going to show you. I'm going to start from the lightest to the darkest. And, 
and I'm just going to do the whole thing, this bubble bath. And maybe I'll leave a little bit around the edges white so it kind of looks like it's highlighted. So if you look at this one up close, you'll see that I leave the edges a little bit white. And if you forget, you can always use the color lifter. So you just want to make sure you give plenty of time that um, that way your image doesn't bleed. Okay, we're going to do the little buds as well. All right, now I'm going to come back with my next darkest, which is the bubble bath blend dark. And I'm going to go, and I'm just kind of coloring it with each petal. So you can see the direction that I'm coloring. So each one of the little petals, I'm starting from the base and going up to the, not all the way to the top because I want a little bit of light to show. And this is what gives your flowers a 3D effect is just by starting down low and going up with a darker color. Okay, now I'm doing a little bit of the Fresh Fuchsia just to add a little pop of dark at the base of all the petals. And you'd be surprised at how much that little pop makes a difference. It just adds a little depth to your blossoms. Just a tiny touch on each one of the balloons. Okay, now think of the light coming from here. So I'm going to do my entire leaf in the Lost Lagoon, which is soon, it's become my favorite green. I really do love green. You'll see that in my home decor as well. And then I'll come back with the darker on one side of the leaf. All right, now all we have to do is do the center and we're using dark lemon lolly for the center of the flowers. Okay, beautiful. Okay, so we're just going to use this die to cut it out. So I don't know what you use, but I saw another demonstrator use these post-it notes and it really helps you hold your die in place until you can get it cut. One of the things you want to be careful though is that if you keep trying to use the same one over and over, you're going to find that it's going to start sticking to your cardstock and then it leaves a little bit of a residue on it. So you just want to use it maybe once or twice. Okay, so the other thing, one of the dies that is I'm using is this one right here and it just makes these beautiful little sprigs. So again, um, I'm going to be using the blends and I'm going to color everywhere I want my fresh freesia. It kind of shows up as pink at first, you'll notice. But after it dries, you can see that the color actually turns more of a very pale purple, which is really lovely. So glad they kept this in color. Just making sure I get all the little spots. Okay, and then I'm going to come back with the dark and I'm just going to do little polka dots. Um, there was a demonstrator, Marcy, that did this 
and I just thought it was beautiful. So I'm doing little polka dots and the reason is, is it makes it look like it could be a narcissist or, I mean, not narcissist, let's see, <laughs> hyacinth. So it could be a hyacinth. So just see how it, you know, they have the little individual blooms. It just really is a beautiful little, beautiful bloom. All right. And now we need to do the stems. And again, I'm going to start with the light. Well, I think I started. Yeah, I think it's the light. Yeah. This is the Light Lost Lagoon blend. And then I'm going to come back with the dark real quick and just darken the base. Okay. So now I need to pop this up on my card. And I'm going to just do a couple of these here. And then once I get this placed, Then I'm going to come back and I'll pop these on, and I'm just going to use a dimensional here at the base. And that's going to get tucked under the flower and curves around really nicely. If you feel like it doesn't have enough support, you could cut another dimensional or use a glue dot to kind of get it to hold on. But I find that allowing things to kind of pop up a little bit adds just a really beautiful 3D effect. Okay, so now we've got a sentiment we're going to put in here and we're going to use the here for you. Make a great get well or thinking of you or you can add your own little spring sentiment and I'm going to put it down as far as I can. Now I recommend that you add your sentiment after you have your wreath built. That way you know that you have enough room. Okay. All right. Okay. The last thing we're going to do is add some of these really beautiful gems. Whoops. I can always tell when I have trimmed my nails because I can't pick up anything. All right. Oops, wrong one. Just adding the two colors so that it's just a beautiful blend of those two colors throughout your card. All right. So that's that card. Now we're going to make this one, which is just a great, I think, a guy card. And it has this fun little peekaboo. So, oh, I forgot to show you the peekaboo that we're done. We did on this one. So you can see the peekaboo is just great. Okay. So, so this one is actually kind of two cards. So this is an A2 card, so it's four and a quarter by five and a half. And then this one in here, so it ended up being the um, 11 by four and a quarter, but this one is four inches by 10 and a half. And then you just score it at five and a quarter. So it makes this great card. Now, if you're wondering where all this came from, I'm gonna show you. All right. So there's some great background, but I was trying to just keep it simple so it looked great for a guy. Okay, so I've already die cut out the trees that I need, and these are 
um, really great tree dyes. And I did this in navy blue. And then I also did one in Misty Moonlight. So the reason I did a second color is because I didn't want everything to, to be Misty Moonlight. Okay. So I already cut out the middle of this card. And when I cut it out, I also cut out my trees. So it's a great way to save a step. The trees fit just inside that circle and we're not going to need the circle for anything else. So just a great way to use up your cardstock. All right, and I've got kitties here that are demanding attention, so I apologize. Hopefully they don't jump up. Okay. All right, so let's line up our cards. All right, so this gets glued in the middle and we're just going to line it up so that it is in the middle of the area that is remaining. And you can put whatever greeting you want inside. You can put happy birthday or congratulations, could be a graduation. Okay, so before we glue this, I'm going to do a little bit of fun, and I'm also going to show you how to do um, a mirroring, um, like a mirror, okay, so a mirror technique, and we're going to use the silicone mat that Stampin' Up! sells. It's so hard to keep this thing clean, it's like a magnet for everything in this room, okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is Okay. So if you line up where this is going to be located, so this will be centered on the cardstock. So I'm going to use this tree stamp. Let me get my sample out here so that we can kind of monitor what I'm doing. Pull this up. Okay, so you can kind of see where the tree is. And then I'm going to stamp on here and then I'm going to use a little bit of scrap paper to blot a little bit off and then I'm going to stamp it so it actually mirrors down below. And then you get kind of like a water reflection below. Okay, so I'm going to put in like a water, a water line. That was boho blue, which is the paper. And then I'm doing some ripples. Okay, so just in case you want to know where I got this paper from, this is what it looks like when it's all one sheet. And this is from the Fresh as a Daisy. So you can see that it's a daisy print on the other side. <clears throat> and now I'm going to do a... a hillside. 
So the hillside is going to go up like so. And then I'm going to use the fine tip to get a little bit of the green in the water. And then I'm going to use the light boho blue and add more hills behind. Now it's pretty dark right now, but it actually is going to lighten up a little bit. And it just looks like there's mountains behind it. Okay, so the mountains don't have to be perfect. They can be kind of jagged. All right, now you're wondering what I'm doing with all this. Well, I'm just going to put more of these trees. And I'm going to stamp twice because what you find is you get kind of a really nice look like your trees are off in the hazy distance. Okay, and I'm going to come back and use this again. I've already stamped it on the on there. And so I'm just going to keep stamping and it just makes a really nice forest. But I also want some of the faded look. Okay. Now, this is where this is going to go. And so before I stamp my sentiment, I actually am going to cl close this about where it's going to be. And now I can stamp my sentiment. So I get my sentiment. If you see this one, it kind of ended up a little to the right, further than I wanted it. So I'm going to stamp it now so that I can kind of get it more centered. And then I know it's going to end up where it's supposed to be. Okay, so I want a little bit more of these trees right here. I'm going to stamp it off once because I want a little bit more of the shadow to show up here. Okay, there we go. Isn't it amazing? So you just start with your own cardstock, but I just use the blends. I mean, there's no reason why you can't make whatever you need. All right. So the exterior of this card is really simple, but I wanted it to be simple so that you were really surprised by the inside of this beautiful card. Okay. So now we're going to add the trees. Let's see if I can get this to stay down. Okay, so the trees I'm going to stagger in the back. Get rid of some of the pieces that are in it. So I'm going to stagger these. And then I'm going to stagger the <clears throat> Misty Moonlight so that it ends up in between. Okay, so this time I'm going to use black dimensional so that it doesn't show up through the cardstock, just so that you can kind of see how I did that. So I have the two navy ones in the back and the misty moonlight staggered in the middle so that you end up with a really nice look of trees. Okay. So I'm going to just kind of find places where I can see the misty moonlight and both the navy ones to help them stay together. And if afterwards you need a little more support, you can um, use glue dots if you feel like there's not enough support underneath. So you can see I've got these glue dots kind of in a semicircle because I want them to hold up the trees and not necessarily 
encroach to the inside of the card. And then I'm going to do the same thing with these little ones. So I'm going to stagger them. And I'm going to put the boho blue. So the very top trees have the boho blue right in between. Don't know if you can see that very well with the lighting. So again, I'm going to turn it over. And I'm going to get these black glue dots so that it's kind of catching all the colors. And then I'm going to just place it here on the right hand side. Okay, it's beautiful. All right, and so the last thing will be these rustic metallic dots. So I think this would make a great masculine card or if you've got, you know, somebody that's just loves the outdoors, this is a great card for them. Really beautiful. All right. So. Wonderful. Little peekaboo. All right. So there's the peekaboo cards. Um, for this last little bit, the trees on the front of your envelope, um, you could just use this same stamp and I'm just going to put it down here and then I'm going to stamp a shadow. Is that pretty? All right, that's it for tonight. Thanks for joining me. And in case you're watching this later on YouTube, you can, um, if you want to, click like and subscribe, share it with your friends. And I'll have this posted to my blog, most likely tomorrow. And I'll have all the measurements and instructions laid out. Um, but you can also just pause and rewind the YouTube video however you need to. Again, my name is Angela. I'm Wild with Wild Violets Art. I appreciate you watching tonight. Have a great week.